Howdy, howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today, we're going to look at my perfect NASCAR schedule. Now, I'll be the first to admit I didn't change a whole lot. Like, I didn't revamp the entire thing. But I did make some changes that I think are necessary and will help improve the schedule. So, I did make it somewhat realistic. Like, I didn't say I want there to be a street course in Japan. It's not going to happen. But I did kind of pick, like, replace things. Or make changes that I felt could happen in the future. And I would want to happen. So let's start off. Bush Clash. Daytona. It'll be a day. It will not be on the road course. The Clash will be on the Super Speedway. Alright, of course, Daytona 500. Not going to change it. Why would you change it? It's perfect how it is. Head down to Las Vegas for race number two. Their West Coast Swing before it gets too hot. It will be a day race. Go down to Phoenix for its first date. Now... You'll notice that a lot of tracks have been cut to one date, except for some special tracks that I feel like could be ran twice. So, Phoenix, Day Race, there you go. And then the Auto Club Short Track. Now, this is just a, a diagram that I found. So, yeah, the Auto Club's obviously going to be changed to a short track in the coming years. So, hopefully it'll produce some good racing. The Auto Club Short Track will be a day race. So, moving on, Atlanta. Now, granted, Atlanta needs a repave or something, because uh, the strategy is just non-existent. You can't stay out. You can't take no tires. It's just, you're going to pay and take four tires, and it's so slick, so loose. It just needs something. Probably a repave, or I guess you can see how it goes if you just keep on trucking how it is. Not sure what will happen to it, but yeah. Daytona Road Course, I feel like, has earned a spot on the schedule. It's produced some good racing. So, you know, I feel like it's good enough to stay on the schedule. Not right after Daytona um, 500, but it is on the schedule. It will be a day race. So, Daytona Road Course, I feel like, is good. Now, I've tried my best to balance it out. So, you got 36 races. Seven road courses is way too much, so I shortened it down. I cut some road courses. Um, There is a... Decent amount of intermediates. Um, there's an okay amount of short tracks. So I just kind of tried to even it out, balance it as much as I possibly could. Bristol day race, no dirt. So this is just the Bristol asphalt. No dirt, nothing. So just Bristol day race. Then you go to Richmond night, another short track. It would be a night race at Richmond. I think it deserves at least one date. And then you go to Martinsville, the night race. Where... At this point, we're in mid to late April. I think Martinsville needs at least one night race because they installed the lights. So, night race is in the spring. And then you go to Circuit of the Americas. So, keeping it on the schedule. I think, hopefully, it's good. it produces good racing this year. I mean, I'm just assuming that it'll be fine enough to keep on going. And then you go to Talladega. At this point, we're in, like, May. So, you got the 11th race of the season, Talladega. I like Talladega a lot, so... It's on here, and then you go to Nashville Super Speedway, assuming that it's a good track. Hope it, hopefully it is, so it's on here. There you go. Then you go to Michigan, a day race, probably approaching June now. So Michigan, and no, we're not approaching June because we haven't gone to the Coke 600 yet, but Michigan is on here. And then you go to the All-Star Race. Now, I think it would be absolutely insane if the All-Star Race could rotate tracks each year. So you'd go to Charlotte, you'd go to New Hampshire, or preferably tracks with lights. So rotating tracks with lights. So don't go to, like, a track like no light. Don't go to, like, Talladega. It doesn't have lights. Go to tracks with lights, Saturday Night Race. I don't want no All-Star Race in the day. And then keep the numbers in the center. As you can see, showcased, I don't want the numbers like that. I want the numbers square on like normal. Charlotte, Cook 600, not going to change it. It's an alright race. Night race, 600 miles. Sonoma, we're going to Sonoma. I think it's good enough to be on here. So, haven't been here in a couple years due to COVID. But, yeah, it deserves a date. Rockingham, I think Rockingham is in good enough shape to be slightly renovated. You're going to have to drop some money into it. Renovate the place, but I think it's it would be more than fine to put it back on the schedule. 
So Rockingham, I think, would be... I know a lot of people probably want it as well. So do I. So Rockingham, I think it would be cool to have. Road America, hope that it does produce some good racing and not just five seconds in between each car. But I'll say it's on here. It's a very long road course, prestigious track. Uh, yeah, hope it is pretty good. Daytona, this is the July 4th weekend. So I want Daytona to be on July 4th weekend. I don't know why they're like switching it around to last race before the playoffs. That's just stupid. So I think Daytona needs to be the July 4th weekend race. It's perfect. You got the patriotic cars, everything. Pretty pog. Pocono. I think Pocono does not deserve two dates. The, the doubleheader is cool and all. But I don't really think it's necessary. I think Pocono deserves one date in the middle of the season. That's all it deserves because Pocono is not the best track to race at. Eldora. Now, Eldora, you're going to have to work some things out with my man Smoke because I'm sure he's not the happiest. But I think with some renovations and with some cooperation with Tony Stewart, this is more than possible. Because you're spending so much money getting that dirt to Bristol to take it up in the fall. Put it back down if they're going to keep doing it in the spring. It's just a lot of trouble. Why not go to a designated dirt track in Eldora? I think that would be ideal for everyone. And Eldora is a pretty cool track. But yet again, you're going to have to renovate it. If you're willing to, you know, if they're willing to spend that money, I think it's perfect. Nashville Fairgrounds. They There have been a lot of talk about getting this place back on the schedule. There's also some issues, too, like with the... The community, the apartment complex, the soccer um, stadium or whatever they're going to build. But I think that it's possible, and I would like to see it. At least try it out. Go there. If it doesn't work, people don't like it, might take it off within the decade. But Nashville Fairgrounds, I think, should be on the schedule. Indianapolis. Now, Indianapolis, I feel like, should not be on the road course. There's too many road courses on the schedule currently. you got to somewhere, someplace, you got to take off some road courses, but I think Indianapolis is deserving of a, at least one date. Now, it might seem crazy, but the Brickyard 400 is pretty classic, kissing the bricks. I like it. It might not produce much great racing, but I feel like it's a, it's a crown jewel. You got to have it on here. If you don't have it on here, it's just a racing, a crown jewel, the kissing the bricks. It's so classic. So, yeah, I think Indianapolis on the oval, the two-mile oval, however long it is, should be on the schedule, not the road course. So, that's my reasoning. New Hampshire. New Hampshire, I feel like, deserves one date. Have some. Gr it's had some great finishes over the years. I think it deserves a date on the schedule. It's all right. It's an all right track. Don't love it. Don't hate it. New Hampshire, race number 23. Now we go to Watkins Glen. At this point, we're probably mid-early. We're in August somewhere. So Watkins Glen, day race. I haven't been mentioning the night or day races, but you guys can read it, I guess, unless you're listening to this like a podcast. Um, But yeah, Watkins Glen International, I think it deserves a date. It's a classic road course. I don't think Watkins Glen should be taken off, even though I'm trying to cut off some road courses. Dover, um, one of its dates is going to be gone because I don't like it Dover that much, but I feel like it deserves at least one date. This is, this might be like the last race before the playoffs. No, it's the second to last. So, playoff implications coming into Dover. It's going to be a pretty cool race, I hope. Or, it would be a cool race, good race. But, Dover deserves at least one date. Not two, because the racing hasn't been that great. But, yeah. Last race before the playoffs is Texas. I think Texas deserves one date. Does not deserve the all-star race unless... It rotates around, but I think it should be a night race at Texas, so it's not hot, because this would, we're talking September, might not be that hot, but it would probably be pretty darn warm, so I say, give it a night race, Texas. Alright, playoffs begin. Darlington, round is 16, 1 out of 3, Darlington, night. So, throwback weekend, I don't know why they're moving the throwback weekend to Mother's Day weekend, I don't understand the reasoning behind this, but this is Labor Day weekend. So Darlington, it's a pretty good track, produced some good racing, it's classic, it's throwback night, It's this is going to be the Sunday before Labor Day. So Darlington, 
deserves one day in the playoffs. Round 16, two out of three, Las Vegas deserves two dates. So here you go. And I've tried my best to balance it out each round. So in the first round, we're going to have more short tracks than um, other tracks, but you should have to work around that. But I tried to balance it out as much as I could and make each round fair. So you got Las Vegas. It's going to be a night race, Saturday night race, because it's going to be pretty darn hot. So you got to keep put that into consideration. So you got night race, night race, night race. So third night race in the row. But yeah. And then another night race, the elimination race at Richmond. Round 16, 3 out of 3, Richmond at night. So it's pretty good track for the playoffs. And it'll be the elimination race. Round of 12, 1 out of 3, another night race. Five night races in a row. To start the playoffs, we go to Bristol. So Bristol is definitely deserving of two dates. Not a dirt race. Normal Bristol for the round of 12, race 1 out of 3. Then we go to Talladega, who deserves two dates, 100%. Round 12, 2 out of 3, Talladega. And then the elimination race is Kansas. It's a good place to eliminate some drivers. Or it's a good place to eliminate... It's a good place to like end off a round because it's an intermediate and... Yeah, I guess so, because it's just, I don't really know what I'm saying, but, like, I think it fits here, Kansas. And then the round of eight begins at the Charlotte Roval. Don't want to cut the Charlotte Roval off, because the alternative is just an oval race. Who wants to see that when you can have the Roval? So the Charlotte Roval definitely deserves a race in the playoffs, round eight. Round of eight, one out of three. Round of eight, two out of three is a Martinsville race, is the day race, Martinsville. Really good track. Produces some amazing finishes. Good racing. Round of 8, 2 out of 3 is Martinsville. And then round of 8, 3 out of 3 is Phoenix. So Phoenix is... I don't think Phoenix should be the championship race anymore. Because it's not balanced. Like, the whole thing is just going to lead down to a... Sh lead up to a short track. But... The championship four is Homestead. I don't know why... What the thought process was to move it away from here. But I have some really good reasoning. Number one. That you'll only go there once a year. So in my ideal schedule, Homestead is once a year. Number two, like everything, all these tracks is going to all lead up to just an oval. So you got the road courses, the short tracks, the Poconos, the everything. It's just going to lead up to a simple oval. And it makes sense. It's a mile and a half. So you got the half miles, the two milers, the one milers. is all going to average out to a mile and a half oval. Simple as that. You might need to, like, Phoenix is renovated. Like, they renovated Phoenix. Re re renovate Homestead. Like, drop some money into there. You don't need to do a whole lot. Like, just improve the fan experience. I don't understand why they moved it away, the championship race away from here. It does not make sense to me. Because Homestead was the perfect, perfect race. So, yeah. Championship for Homestead Day. Now, that's the perfect schedule keeping the playoff format that we have today. What is my perfect playoffs? So 12 drivers from 16 to 12. When you're in, is gone. 10 races. So still 10 races. After three races, eight drivers remain. After six races, four drivers remain. And then the last four races of the playoffs are the championship four. So this is really going to even it out. So it's just not like... So because the championship could come down to one last restart. So my perfect playoffs. First round stays the same. Darlington, Vegas, Richmond. This is the round of 12. Stays the same for round of eight. Bristol, Talladega. Kansas, and this is the championship four. So you get a, the Roval, Martinsville, Phoenix, and Homestead. The champ, the champ four driver who leads the champ four points after Homestead is crowned the champion. So there you go. There's my perfect playoffs, my perfect schedule. But yep, there you go. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave any opinions or suggestions or anything in the comments. So yeah, there's my perfect schedule. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.